Mel and Thomas, Benedict, are you there with us this evening? Yes. Um, hello and good evening, Joyce. Let me tell you, you and Jack were a pleasure to listen to. <laughs> well, in any case, uh, of all the guests that George has had on in the last 10, 15 years, I don't know how long he's been out there, uh, I have to say you were the very best, Mellon. So that's oh, thank you. you know, a real, real feather in your cap. And no matter what difficult questions he asked you, Mellon, you, you really spoke with such intensity and clarity and honesty. Now, how is it possible that you could be clinically dead for that period of time and come back and be so healthy and so strong. Didn't the silver cord or the sutratma, whatever it is, uh, break? No, it never breaks, ever, okay. ever, ever. Mm -hmm. It never breaks. Uh, but by the way, I don't hold the record for being dead by any means. Um, there have been people who have been dead a lot longer than I have. Or, but they're not interesting, Melanie. Yeah, and come back without any brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> These people, we don't, know, we, we don't care about them. I, I know who some of them are, and some, yeah. of, some of them are my friends. But <laughs> you're a new friend, Melanie. Okay. Melanie, you're really amazing. Uh, while you were on the other side, what, what is the main thing that you learned or that you'd like to share with us? Well, I, I think the most amazing thing, you know, I had... Um, um, I had an event which uh, P PMH Atwater writes about because she, she really discovered me in the backwaters. And, uh, of course, uh, I didn't know. Uh, before I died, I, I didn't, I'd never heard the word near death. I'd never been into metaphysics or hospice or anything. I knew nothing of all that. But um, uh, I was surprised when she and Ken Ring pointed out that, uh, in my experience, one of the first things I learned was that the experience was interactive, just as l the life you're living right now is interactive. Your death experience is completely interactive. So I encourage people uh, that uh, go to the light to be completely interactive with it. And uh, um, I asked the light if I could uh, spend time with it, and, and I just had question after question, infinite amount of questions that were answered to my satisfaction. I loved that. I loved yeah. that you said that. And, How long um, were you with them? Uh, well, it, you're, you're out of time space continuum, so mm -hmm. it seemed like forever, and it also seemed like one second <laughs> once yeah. I came back. And they didn't rush you, and they answered your questions slowly and carefully and methodically. I love that. And they said, Are you sure you have no more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Um, all, all of my major questions were, were answered to my satisfaction about the universe, but that doesn't mean I know everything by any means, because, um, uh, as you know, we all, each and every one of us, have our unique set of questions. Uh, to explore in this universe. Well, I have to say, I was telling Jack that you are so modest that before this experience, you weren't that metaphysical and you weren't that tuned in. And so this was really quite uh, an epiphany for you. <laughs> it was really, you had said to George that you weren't, I hate to say intelligent, or you weren't that bright before this experience. You, you were not that well informed about metaphysical things. Especially. No, I was I was pretty thick, and and in the old days, um, <laughs> in the I didn't old want to thick say as that. a brick, you know, thick as a brick. <laughs> I didn't but, want to say uh, that. in the old days, and I, I look back at some of the things I, I used to do back then. I, I didn't <laughs> want to say that. <laughs> and I, I look back at some of the things I, I used to do back then. I can't even believe that was me. <laughs> well, see, so is it possible that the old Melon Thomas Benedict died completely, and you came in as a whole new entity? No, not at all. My life is a continuum and has expanded. And I got, um, I got to, um, uh, w once I went to the light and got the truth, I really got it, and I'll never lose it. Do you think that we should be concerned about this date, uh, December 31st, 2001, I believe is what it is, that everyone is really uh, quite, quite concerned about because the Mayan calendar ends on that day? I think Maybe it was in 2012. Whatever it was, I missed the date completely. <laughs> 2012. <laughs> Thank you, 2012. That's why I keep yeah. Jack around. 2012.5. Yeah, 2012. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, thank you, Jack. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, what do you think about that? They run out of ink, what? <laughs> well, you know, I, um, um, I did on the other side ask about, um, you know, the future of the world and, and all of that. And I was shown sort of the history of prophecy. And I was also shown that all the prophecies about the end of the world end in most of our lifetimes now, and it's going to be a paradigm shift because we're going to get past this all this end of the world stuff. And in fact, the, 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 you give me any date, the world's going to end, and I'll bet the farm on it that it won't end. 
Mm, that's very interesting. Okay, so then, uh, you, you feel that this is just one more date and that people should not feel distressed about it. No, they shouldn't feel like the sky is falling because that date in the Mayan calendar, we're, we're completing a complete circle around our galaxy, which takes around uh, 26,000 years. And it was amazing that they could um, predict this and, and time it so perfectly. They were the masters of time. But it, 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 was, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world at all. It's the end of a certain paradigm, and the, and, it's all, and the end is always the beginning. Oh, Mel, I'm so glad you said that because I heard you say that when you were on with George, and I, that was such a positive statement, and it, it made so many people feel so much better because especially, you know, what happened in New York today, I mean, what mm -hmm. happened at the Grand Central Station. So these are very, very distressing, hairy times. But you said, you know what? These are the best times ever. I remember uh, saying that. I, here we are thinking that we're on a serious decline and slipping into some sort of state of oblivion. And Mel and Thomas comes along and says, nope, you're wrong. Things are getting better and better. <laughs> so could you tell us uh, from your viewpoint why we should feel optimistic? Because you sure made me feel optimistic. Well, could I just ask a question? Does that mean the origins of the Mayan calendar are 26,000 years ago? Um, uh, say that one more time. <clears throat> well, you said uh, that, that what they were actually showing was a complete cycle of the you know 26,000 year cycle. Does that mean that calendar originated 26,000 years ago? No, but they uh, the, the, the secrets they discovered about time, and they also in, invented the, the number zero. The Chinese invented the number, I mean, the Indians invented the number one. They invented the number zero. And once you get to zero, you can project forwards and backwards. And, and the universe is fairly predictable because it's so pattern-oriented. And everything in the universe is very pattern-oriented. And mm -hmm. uh, that's why uh, the, 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 the future has been fairly easy to predict up till now. It's going to be very different now because the uh, time-space continuum is going to change dramatically and the cat's out of the bag and we're going to enter into create your own reality from now on. Really? So it's always been that way. We're just going to become aware of it now. Really? And so what about karma? Does that enter into it at all? Karma will always exist in every paradigm and in every atomic function, every cell function, every star. Karma is cause and effect. Mm -hmm. But you, become, you can become the masters of karma and... It's really easy to end karma, your karma, your negative karma. There's good karma and negative karma. The best way to end your negative karma, as our teachers have taught us for thousands of years, is to forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. In other words, hmm. forgive and don't repeat. And don't repeat. And don't repeat the error and don't repeat the hustle feelings. Just let it all go. And people who say, oh, I will never, I can forgive them, but I'll never forget. That's only half, <laughs> right? Just, well, the universe loves memory. Memory is a very good thing, and you, you don't want to lose uh, the memories of these things, but you do want to take the negative charges off of them. I like the way you, you laugh through some of the most um, taxing, most difficult <laughs> questions that we ask you, like very well, you know, uh, challenging questions. <laughs> right now, today, on the planet, we have the most healers in history are alive, the most therapists are alive, the most modalities that have ever existed to... Um, explore yourself and explore consciousness are alive and we're living in that time. It's an amazing time. If you want help, you can find it inside or out anywhere. Okay, we, we were starting to touch on reincarnation before, the true nature of reincarnation. I wonder if you could go into that, please. Well, that's, uh, you know, that, that was uh, something I'm, I'm still love and fascinated with is the whole concept of uh, reincarnation. Yeah. And on the other side, the light uh, uh, pointed out that most of the world and most cultures believe in some form of reincarnation, so don't you think there might be something to it? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, explain. And the light uh, taught me the lessons of the, the um, it turns out that the, the uh, spiritual and, forgive me for saying it, new age concepts of reincarnation are rather flimsy, really. really? They're more philosophical. Mm -hmm. But what I was shown on the other side was the quantum physics and the quantum mechanics of reincarnation, and that is solid, and it's incredibly beautiful. Okay, could you talk a bit more about that, please? Well, uh, it turns out that there is nothing metaphysical in the entire universe. There is nothing metaphysical, non-physical. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, everything since the Big Bang has been m more subtle and subtle energy. You'd be more dense than the singularity point in a, in a Big Bang event. And there have been many Big Bangs. 
But uh, ever since the Big Bang, we have become more and more subtle. Our, our own human body is so subtle they're amazing because, you know, not even, no two atoms in your body even touch each other. Amazing. We're really, we're really, uh, uh, we're really more spirit than flesh already. Well, okay. And, and so this, this lives on and on. And so what we call the other side uh, and what we call uh, metaphysics is really a misnomer because what you have is uh, on one side you can go into realms of denser and denser energy and on the other side you go into realms of even more subtle energy than our physics can explain at, uh, at this time. But everything is real and everything is quanta and everything has a relationship. And one, one of the people uh, that I was told to look up was this guy named Cleve Baxter. Oh, yes. The guy who discovered plants have feelings. Sure. And we, I did. I was told to go find Baxter, and I did. Yeah, good, and he's good. been a friend of mine ever since. I, I, I love Cleve. And I was told that he had discovered something as important as, as anything Einstein had ever done, anything as, as, as Newton had ever done, and that was what he calls primary perception. And this kind of explains how everything in the universe, you've heard of the holographic universe. Sure. Mm -hmm. Cleve does ele elegant experiments to demonstrate this to us and to show that everything in the universe, everything is in touch with everything else simultaneously with no time lag, that there are realms faster than the speed of light. In fact, the speed of light is too slow to do almost anything, certainly too slow to explore the universe. Melon, do us a huge favor. We're old Cleve Baxter fans also, since he did his early uh, shrimp, uh, brownie shrimp. Um, yeah. Please tell him we would love him to be on the show also. I sure will. So if he could uh, just link up with us, we'd appreciate it. I sure will. But, see, you really have your finger on the pulse of what so many of us are wondering about. So did they actually tune up your psychic abilities? Did they make you uh, more psychic than when you cr before you crossed over? Well, I, I think we're all incredibly psychic. Even bacteria uh, are incredibly what we might call psychic. What, what, what happened to me was is that my filters and my veils were pulled back and, and um, obliterated. Ah, you see, that's brilliant. You see, and, and there it was. Okay. It was always there. So, and did they also allow you to see, did the light allow you to see your own past incarnations at all? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I've been writing about that, and I'll put it out as a as a book one day called The Evolution of a Soul. And um, um, I got to see um, uh, my lives from, uh, my, uh, from my first evolution as a human and into the, the human world of karma to the present and into the future about 400 years from now and how they all related. And, and uh, um, what the amazing thing is that all of this exists in what we call the now, the, the past, the present, the future are really in one moment. And when you get in that moment, that moment expands and includes the past, the present, and the future. And um, there are certain past lives that I have that I really love. And I tell you, I go back and visit them and hang out there like they did. <laughs> you can do that? <laughs> oh, anybody can. Uh, what, what's one of your favorites? Um, I, I had a lifetime as a, as a Moor in Spain, you know, before uh, yeah. it was uh, taken over by the Christians. Uh -huh. And I remember uh, nights in the Alhambra. Mm. You know, in Spain, and I, I remember the culture was so rich and so enlightened and, and so magical. It was just a magic time to be alive. What approximately? What time frame was that? Oh gosh, I'm a, I'm a little brain dead right no, now. No, okay. it, 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 it was it was while the Christians were still in the Dark Ages, burning people. Oh, <laughs> that can't be good. Do you? Did they explain to you that there are or aren't any accidents in the universe? Is there any touching on these? That's interesting because, um, as I learned from, from, from what I learned, is that they're, they're, the universe has to be big enough to allow accidents and free radical activity, or this would be a closed loop universe. Oh, so then there are accidents. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. the trick about the human mind, and the human mind is so very young at this point in history, the human mind is so very young, but it has this incredible talent to connect the dots. To, to make any picture. Mm -hmm. And I've done this in workshops where I've, I've just put a random, unbeknownst to the uh, people in the workshop, I've just put a random series of dots on, on a board and said, these are star positions. Everybody, and I divide the group into three uh, groups and say, every, you group, each group connect the dots in your own way. The same set of dots were connected in so many different ways, it was amazing. And in, in the book that I'm about to finish, I call it the Rorschach universe. You know, the Rorschach oh, yeah. ink spots? Sure, fine. You can have 100 people look at those same ink spots and come up with a different story. 
No, so that's the trick of the mind. Sure. Your mind has a tendency to, tr and your mind is always in hindsight, by the way. We have not yet got into foresight, or, we'd be, or, we, or we wouldn't have karma that we have. So we're always hindsight, you know, 2020 genius hindsight. Oh, so genius, yes. Yeah. And, and so mm -hmm. the, mind, uh, the mind has this facility to make sense of anything, but that's a trick. Mm -hmm. That's a trick of the mind. So they explain about soulmates, which everyone wants to know about, and twin flames and twin souls and all of the above. Yes. I, um, I asked, uh, do I have a soulmate? And um, the light told me that the only soulmate I will ever have is myself, my triune being myself and I mm -hmm. and that is the only soulmate I can ever have uh, was is, is in me and that I should have a love affair with myself and treat myself as my soulmate anything outside of us are life mates and playmates and they come to they come in two versions positive and negative <laughs> <laughs> okay now did they also speaking of life mates and playmates is that what you said yes okay life mates and playmates do they touch on that very, very tricky subject now of homosexuality, transgender, jumping sexes, and all of the above that we're dealing with now? It's all quite natural. And one of the things I saw about the future is that the future is going to be by far predominantly female. Oh. But the future, in the future, what's interesting is that the general population is more androgynous. Mm -hmm. And homosexuals and heterosexuals are actually fairly rare. Why? Because love, right? because love is love. Oh, love is love. See, that's so good. Love is love, and love is all. That's so yeah. beautiful. For the folks who are just tuning in, we have the great honor of speaking with Melon Thomas, who actually spells his name Melon Dash Thomas. And do you use your last name Benedict at all, Melon? Uh, only uh, only um, uh, uh, when I have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let us tell people again if they'd like to reach you. Uh, you are available not for readings, right, or perhaps for lectures, or why would you? I, I do. I do a certain amount of workshops, and I am available for phone consultation. Oh, you are now. Okay. I, I, I did that for uh, about 13 years, and I loved it, and I gave it up for about 10 years to do uh, the, the research work that I've been doing. But now I'm 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 back doing it because I love doing it. Right. And I can't answer every question. There's no. some questions I don't answer. Well, your readings are like what? What would people expect? Now, you know what everyone wants. Everyone wants to be prosperous and have their children turn out not to be mass murderers, that kind of thing. Uh, what kind of readings are you doing? You know, it's, uh, it's very eclectic. Um, I really go with the flow, and I try to get to the, the pearl of what the person is really, really um, got going in their soul. Ah, oh, the essence. Yeah, I Excellent. try to peel the onion and get to the essence, and, and uh, a lot of times it may start off with superficial questions, but, but pretty quickly we get down to the pearl. Well, you must have your third eye. They really must have snapped that third eye open if you'd be able to do that, and your pineal must be working overtime, or you would not be able to do that, especially over the phone. So uh, even though you're very modest, I, I know that you're very modest. I will say that for you, that you are incredibly psychic. People would like to log on to your website, we'll just make sure they write it down right now. It's www.melon, that's M-E-L-L-E-N, dash Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S dot com. It's melon dash Thomas dot com. Sorry I sound so hoarse this evening. I think it's air conditioning. Jack, were you going to say something? Yes, I want to ask Melon. Uh, he said the human uh, humans are at an early point of the development. Mm -hmm. What about all the other races in the universe? Boy, I tell you, there, there are some that are a million years ahead of us. Mm -hmm. There are some only 50 years ahead of us, and there are some behind us. Uh, humans in this particular system that we live in are actually only approaching our midpoint. Uh, our bodies didn't used to look like this past. Our bodies won't look like this in the future. Uh, we're a midpoint. We're at a midpoint of our, of our uh, creation evolution. And, in fact, mm -hmm. the, the, the whole event of creation is just begun. There's, we're not, we're, there is no end at all in sight. Uh, this is just the beginning. And look at how far we've come already, and this is just the beginning. Oh, how interesting well, is that? I'm sorry, Jack. I, I wonder just how far we have come. <laughs> we have come so far, it, it's absolutely astounding, because um, uh, um, we, in this particular system, the, the Earth was completely sterile when it first formed, completely sterile, because it, it started out as a molten blob. And cooled, and we know for a fact that the minute the Earth cooled, 
uh, just enough, life began. And that's because um, life did not start here and life do does not end here. You can imagine the Earth as an ovary and comets with all kinds of life forms on it are the sperm coming to the Earth. And the minute those two got together, you have life. Mm, how, how interesting. Yeah, well, Give life half a chance anywhere in the universe, and it's going to it's gonna, mm. uh, uh, spring up and blossom. It seems like we've gone from sterility to pollution, and also I don't see much development in man's treatment of his fellow man. Well, you know, I, that, uh, I, when I died, I had a very negative attitude of humanity. I thought humanity was a cancer on the planet. Mm -hmm. I really did. And guess what I developed? Brain cancer. Isn't that interesting? See, so, Jack, you really shouldn't think that because you always talk about the fact that we're not evolving. And I see us as evolving. You say, oh, well, how is we, we have come so far. You know, you, you have to look at the, 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 other, the other great thing I learned. There were three really important things. The, the, the next thing was the whole concept of Gaia, G-A-I-A, mm -hmm. uh, the whole living. We're part of an entire living system. We're only part of a huge life form called planet Earth and the solar system. And so we have a rather primitive, chauvinistic view of what life is. If it's not like us, it's not life. Um, but we're, we're only one part of an incredible life form that we call uh, Gaia. And, and, and on the other side, it was called the Sun Gaia system. Can you and, explain that a little uh, bit more? Don't, don't depart from that. That's very interesting. Uh, also. Yeah, and, and this is a concept that, that we're beginning to see. And, and some of the first people to really get this was like James Lovelock of mm -hmm. England, came up with the phrase Gaia. And also the first astronauts that got far enough away from the planet to see the whole planet oh, yes. as, one, as one being, it really is one being. What are we not being told that we should be told by our government and, you know, that we're, everybody now is so suspicious of everyone. And today well, we uh, the, the, the first thing we're not being told by our churches is there is no death. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should not fear death at all. Right. Uh, every every life you ever live and every death you ever have is but a night and a day in a greater life that you're living. So there is no death. It, that's that's what we've been saying all along, and this is why we have a, a, a departure from so many religions that teach us that there is death and grieving, and you put them in a box and the whole thing. So wrong. This is why I'm so happy that Simon Schuster and St. Martin's all have published some of my books that have allowed me to have that voice and to say there is no death. So I'm so happy, Mel and Thomas. That's, that a, that's just incredible. I, I, you know, I don't well, think... Oh, well, when I was with the light, and I asked... Uh, I, was, I was standing with the light, and I asked the question. It was one of my earlier questions. Mm -hmm. I said, why is humanity so dark and doomed? Why is that? Uh -huh. And the light turned into a mandala of oh. human souls, mm -hmm. and I was taken into this mandala, and it still blows me away. I could see inside every human soul, it seemed like, and I could see to the nth degree, and I could see no darkness, I could see no evil, and at that moment, I fell in love with humanity. Yes, it's a real love affair. Can you explain what a mandala is to the folks who may not have seen it? Um, uh, well, people that don't know what a mandala is, it, they may know what those circular windows in the uh, cathedrals look like. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like that, all these different panels. And a mandala is the uh, sort of the um, Indian version of this. Um, and it's like, uh, it's like those giant stained glass windows in the cathedrals. Mm -hmm. And each panel was living, and each panel was a soul of something that was like a giant lotus forming the whole of all of us. Mm. Fascinating. That's really amazing. Now, you also had mentioned that you have a poem that you wanted to share with the audience. Is, oh, yeah. Is that something you'd like to do at this time? Yeah, I would. Uh, and, and this one is sort of uh, to all of us that, um, you know, there's so, many, so much going on, and we don't know what's happening, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of fear in the world, yes. um, and a lot of changes going on all around us. And, and this poem is, is addressed to all of us, um, and it's all of us that are going through this. It's entitled, Your Dance your way and it starts all around you time life and density change all the time skins of past relations fall away and all karmic plots are undone and rewound on the network of souls look at the searching one does in body and spirit climb jacob's ladder touch the face of god and still the fire of life will have its way 
deep inside the soul, the old self-image slowly burns away. And there, in the white ash and glowing darkness, a new image of self is being born in the beautiful night of your life. Mm. Sparks fly from the phoenix fire like shooting stars to wish on. So your life is a wish, and so you're born again into the dance of life. The dance is your life. You are the dance. Your life is the way. Trust your life. Let go and grow. Now, what can I say? That, is that in any of your books? Not yet. You're going to put it in? Now, tell us which books you have. You, well, I, I really haven't finished any book yet. I'm about, uh -huh. uh, I'm about to finish the first in a series. I, I, I write every day for about three hours, and I've never stopped writing. Good, good, good. And uh, so I have plenty of, plenty of material. And although many times it seems like my near-death experience and everything I learned only took a second, it's taken me 20-some years now to tell the story. <laughs> when did that actually occur? Nin uh, 1982. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was diagnosed in late 81 and given uh, six to eight months to live. It was incurable and operable at the time. Uh, so what happened? You actually died in the hospital. In, the ho in a private hospital in situation. In a private hospital, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And they declared you dead? Well, I, had a li I had a living will uh, that uh, requested that, um, um, that I not be resuscitated or put on machines or, or taken anywhere until they were sure I was dead. And I, I, uh, I, I, got, a, I got them to agree of a, mi of a minimum of several hours, and they had uh, amplified, amplified stethoscopes and stuff that to measure. But here's the interesting thing. I, I believe I died around 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and they usually never came into my room till around 10 because I was withering away and very tired. So uh, by the time they came into my room, uh, my, uh, my, my caretaker said, you were already stiff. Mm. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been with someone who has died oh, or, yeah. or seen a dead person. Yeah. But they don't look passed out. No, they look dead. Yeah, Big and, and, and the skin mm -hmm. feels different almost oh, immediately. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And so uh, my hospice uh, caretaker immediately started uh, monitoring my, my vital uh, signs, and uh, she monitored for an hour and a half. She stayed with me, and at that time she was convinced I was dead. And she went uh, into the other room uh, to talk to another lady that was there, as, as she tells me. And it was while she was talking to the other lady that she heard a sound in my room. And she went back in, and I had... Uh, somehow fallen off the bed and was laying on the floor whispering, and she, she said she put her ear to my lips, and I was saying, I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. <laughs> you should, you, that should be a title of one of your books, I Love My Life. <laughs> oh, that's good. Now, for those of us who are not sure what a living will is and what you would recommend to any of us who might have this experience, you probably snap us on to tubes and wires and such, what would you suggest for the average person or for the metaphysical person, even though you said there's no such word as metaphysical? I, I, think everyone should, I think everyone should have one because you don't want to leave that up to a bunch of strangers and a bunch of people in fear right. uh, of death uh -huh. or in fear of some kind of malpractice suit or something. Yeah. Because they'll plug you up and keep you artificially alive. Um, they'll keep your body alive, but the spirit may already have left. So then the living will will ensure that they do not do that. You can stipulate that, right? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I suggest um, everyone who, who feels that way, who don't want to be resuscitated and, or plugged up uh, to machines and kept alive artificially, or at least your, your body, your, your vital signs kept alive artificially, uh, look and look on the Internet now, or, or there you can uh, talk to attorneys. Uh, and you can drop uh, a living will yourself. Just have it uh, signed, witnessed, and um, notarized. Is there any advantage whatsoever to being kept alive artificially? You know, uh, there are some people that say there's, there's always a chance, and, and that's true, but, um, but that's a personal decision. I personally uh, was ready to die, and I was ready to leave this world because I thought it was a terrible place. Yes. And, and I certainly, and I, and I, wanted, to, I wanted them to make sure I was dead. <laughs> for the, yes, all right. So then uh, for the case, in the case of most people, Probably artificial means would not be recommended to too many people. I mean, who, to whom would uh, that be ideal for? I mean, who, the, per, the person who was clinging to life with um, no desire to uh, grow. I mean, I'm really not sure. This is one thing that has always perplexed me. You know, I've, I've uh, uh, in, in my world travels, I've um, 
I have seen the most amazing miracles and things. I, I've seen people, if, 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 um, if something ever happened to me again, I would give faith healers and healers the first chance. I would give a miracle the first chance. And so I would say if, if someone was all wired up and everything, I'd bring a whole bunch of healers in the room, some manifestors, and yeah. let, let them have a go at uh -huh. it. Uh, because, you know, I've traveled the world studying these things, and I've, I've seen people healed of the most amazing things by holy water, holy places, holy men, holy women, and holy moly. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, Jack will tell you that, because he and I have had incredible healing experiences. Yes, Jack? Uh, yes, true. Really amazing. And I'd I know... give a, mir a miracle the first chance. I really would. The universe is one giant miracle, and you're a part of that. I'm going to go with miracles, too, and we always have, and we're going to continue that way. But uh, for the folks who are just tuning in, we've had the uh, pleasure for the, almost the last hour. No, not really. We kind of had a lot of things in the beginning to cover. But we've uh, been with Melon Thomas, who actually spells his name Melon, M-E-L-L-E-N, dash, Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, Benedict. And that's such a nice name. I'm surprised you don't use the Benedict part. Oh, well, I do when I have to, you know. <laughs> All right, but your, your website is very simple and easy to get to. It's www dot melon dash thomas dot com what were your parents thinking when they called you melon well see my parents didn't give me that name that's the name i picked up after my near-death experience oh okay because i was thinking poor melon he went to <laughs> the school with this name it had to be followed by head i'm sorry i had to say it <laughs> well i'm just lucky they didn't name me eggs benedict <laughs> either eggs benedict or melon head i couldn't help myself but i said where did he get that name i'd like to find his parents well, and speak to them <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice, combin yeah, it's a nice I, combination I, of an industrialist an apostle and a pope <laughs> <laughs> and melon, you know, melon is the name I picked up on the other side because that was the vibration of my higher self matrix, my guardian angel, you might say. Oh, beautiful. Mm. So please tell us, uh, this is a question everyone writes uh, and sends and has emails and wants to know, do we have one guardian angel? Do we have many? When people die, can they become angels? No. Can I answer my own question? Answering your own question, eh? <laughs> I had to slip in that now. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how many guides or protectors, call them what you will, most people have, as far as you can tell, if you know the answer. Well, you know, um, intimately, we, we all have a uh, um, uh, 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 subconscious, a conscious, and a superconscious, which is really the higher self, and that is also the, the real guardian angel individually. The now, self. there are all kinds of other, quote, angelic forces that have been created by our prayers every time that we need to help. And uh, and when, then once the crisis passed, we abandoned them and forget them. So we've oh, created so these terrible. angels and are all looking for work. <laughs> They're all unemployed. Uh, <laughs> you know, we we, uh, we love them and leave them. Uh, so so there are a tremendous amount of helpers out there. And and one of the things I suggest to people that are are very ill or or want to get through certain things in their life, whatever it might be, is that the the universe and our realm is full of incredible amount of helpers. And so in your meditation, in your dreams, call in the very best specialist with your problem to work with you yeah and when they come in they usually will show themselves not always but you'll get a little glimpse of them either in a dream or somewhere they'll say hi i'm here we're going to be doing we're writing this book together you're going to let you know what they're doing exactly you know? and if the experience isn't comfortable don't go with it just like if you if you're going to see a doctor or a lawyer and you're not comfortable just don't continue there's there don't get stuck on the first one that shows up and for the folks who say i've never seen anything, I don't know anything, what do you say to them? I know so many people who are really shut down. I know, and but there are so many ways to um, open up. There are so many ways to receive the light. Um, uh, what I've discovered is uh, in, I, I've seen everything work, anything and everything works. So the trick is just find what works for you and don't give up. Mm. So you say what works uh, for you is what you would stick with. Now, if you want to elevate your consciousness even more, is meditation important? Uh, uh, th there are different types of meditation. Uh, what most people do in their meditations is a check out, what I call a checkout meditation. They go to zero or blank their minds. Mm -hmm. I prefer uh, passionate meditations. I, I prefer to get passionate about life and, and manifesting energy. Passion generates a lot of manifest, uh, manifestation energy. So... Um, so when I, met, uh, when I uh, meditate about abundance or health, I get very passionate and emotional and, and, and joyful about it. So and passion. that creates an awful lot of mana or ectoplasm or manifestation energy. Well, so passion really is the key. Passion in life 
or communicating with uh, the non-physical, the key is passion. The key is passion uh, in this realm. A lot of people might want to check out and need a break from all the stresses in the world, so those going to zero-point meditations are, are, are healthy little things, but I, I've met people that that's the only thing they do. Is mm. just check out and escape. That's a form of, in that way, it's a form of escapism. What about road prayer? Um, you know, what's interesting is, um, on the other side, I asked, I said, you know, uh, I got sort of a history of religions and everything. Sure, sure. And, and I asked the light, I said, you know, well, what's the be- what, re- what religion should I be? What's the best religion? And the light lovingly laughed and said, I don't care. Exactly. I, Philosophies, I know religions that. come and go, they love me and they leave me. But what always <laughs> remains is you and me. Do you, think, mm. do you think that most people think you're as funny as we think you are? <laughs> we think so. you're very funny. But, I, don't but I, I was shown that one of the highest things on the planet um, is the kahunas, the kahuna oh, yes, uh, I know that. information. Uh-huh. And so I became fascinated and have gotten to know a number of kahunas. And the kahuna way of thinking and dealing with the universe is phenomenally powerful and enlightening. Tell us who the kahunas are for the folks who are not familiar with that. Uh, the kahunas were uh, the kahunas actually started back in Africa, and, and it's, they predate um, they predate uh, Sanskrit and the Sumerians and everything. And they seem to have that this knowledge seemed to have arrived on the planet fully blown, fully developed, and is still the highest language on the planet. And, and the, I think the highest way of, of understanding the universe and yourself, they understood about the superconscious, subconscious before Sanskrit was even invented. Wow. So it started in Africa and moved around the world and ended up in, in the Polynesian Hawaii uh, and was suppressed until after World War II. Um, my favorite kahuna is Serge King. Why? I've, I've met him and uh, on several occasions, and, and he walks his talk, and he is just an astounding human being. And he's also written, I think, the best books on, to, on understanding the Kahuna way. Okay, so we'll try and to... And it's not a religion, by the way. All right, so we'll try to go to his website. I would assume he has Yeah, Serge one. King. Okay, and uh, he's the author of a number of books about Kahuna for the folks who uh, may have been dozing. If you want to understand yourself, which is the most, the first most important thing you can do, and so getting back to prayer, in that the highest form of prayer I've learned is is the way the Kahuna's pray, and they give you an example. Like the Lord's Prayer is actually a blu- a blueprint on how to construct an effective prayer, but uh, that was uh, taken away from us and lost in in the in the West. So what what you have is people are reading the blueprint; they're not actually creating a prayer. I, I, I got lost with that. Okay, say that again. <laughs> the the Lord's Prayer is actually a blueprint on how to create an effective, constructive prayer that will actually manifest. Okay, that that's easy to understand. And then you said... And then, but what's happened in the West is that that... See, the, the Lord's Prayer is like a blueprint on how to do something. Okay. And what most people have done is they've lost the meaning of that, so they just keep reciting the blueprint over and over. It's like in, in a lot of traditions, the dance used to mean something, and now a lot of people just do the dance, and, and they don't know what the dance means. Oh, I see. That's but the dance was to create ectoplasm, to create mana and prana, and, and to help manifest. Um, you know, I, I didn't understand the Bible until I, until I got into the Kahuna information, and then suddenly I could read any book and understand it on three levels. The Kahunas always speak, and their language is a language that everything has three meanings. One meaning for the subconscious, one meaning for the conscious, and one meaning from the superconscious. It's an incredible language to learn. So you have to read the Bible on three levels and not just take it literally. Because, and, and even, the, even the Christians say, and this is true, that, that Christ taught parables sure. to, the, to, to the unenlightened masses. Okay. And to the, the inner circle, some say there were 77 in the inner circle, he taught the higher knowledge. Oh, and yeah. then only to a very special few that could even understand it, he taught the, the precepts of the higher self. Maybe just your scenes or some very yeah. limited groups. Jack, you have been so... No, I was going to say the exoteric and the esoteric, but um, apparently there's a third level. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. So you really uh, are a font. <laughs> and why well, do you think you were chosen for this? I wasn't chosen because, you know... Um, I, I, at one point, I asked the light, um, "Am I special? Why? Why yeah. is this so special?" And the light laughed and 
said, the example is if you can do it, anybody can. You're not that special. <laughs> trust me, you're not that special. Believe I me. I heard, Believe me. I heard that growing up. Trust me, you're not that special. <laughs> you're embarrassing me. <laughs> no, but that's wonderful, though. Uh, again, I wanted to tell people how they can get to your website. And before I forget, I, I, I very rarely do this, but I'm going to ask you, Melon, if you'll join us also on uh, next week's show because this show is so short and we have messages tonight. You're only on us like about 45 minutes or so, and you have so much to share with us. Would you join us again next week? Is that Thursday? No, it's Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it just so happens my calendar is free. Book me, Dano. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting you down for next Wednesday. And great. I'm looking forward to it. It would be a great, great honor to have you back. So Thank folks you. Who would like to go to your website again? It's www.melon.com. We love your name, even though it sort of makes me hungry. <laughs> Thank you, Melon. <laughs> Thank you. We'll talk to you again next week. It's our great honor. Thank okay, you. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. Thank and a uh, big thank you to Tom Ross for getting us on up here and to Jack. And he's the one of you. Go to my website. It's JoyceTeller.com. And uh, you'll find one.